Hi, this video is on everything you need to know about rigid transformations for high school geometry. A rigid transformation uh, is when you can move a figure, a geometric figure, or turn it any way you want, but the size of the shape and the shape of the figure doesn't change at all. That means it's rigid. And there's three types of transformations. There's a translation, which is just moving the figure, the geometric figure, some distance and direction without turning it. And I want to show that on that diagram on the right, the, the figure that you're starting with is called the pre-image. And the figure you end up with after you do the translation or the transformation you, is called the image. So you start with the pre-image and you end up with the image. So there's translation. And then there is reflection, where you reflect the pre-image like a mirror over what's called the line of reflection. And then there is rotation, where you can rotate the pre-image a given number of degrees around what's called a point of rotation. So these are the three types of transformations, movements. And you can create combinations of these and move a geometric figure anywhere you want. So you can do these transformations in three basic ways in geometry. And, and one is using what I call pure geometry, is using a compass and a straight edge like the ancient Greeks would do it. You could use what could be called measured geometry using a, roller, a ruler and a protractor. And then you can use analytic geometry, which is where the geometric figures are on an xy coordinate plane. And analytic geometry connects geometry with algebra. And in your high school geometry class, you'll most likely do analytic geometry for your transformations. So that's what we're going to do in this video. And with analytic geometry, this is how you do any transformation. And this is what you do is you copy each vertex of the pre-image to its proper location in where it will be in the image, and then you draw the lines of the image. So you're just copying vertex by vertex. And the, tr the transformation, the copying of this vertex, is specified in the following way. Uh, you'll see this. This, this first uh, line here says that there's some point xy, a vertex on your pre-image, and you want to move for you want to move that or copy that um, vertex to uh, another position, and it using this function. A function is like well, we'll see some examples. And the first function is for the x position, the first uh, of the what's called the ordered pair. The x and y are called an ordered pair, and the, the first one is the x position, uh, and the second one is a function for the y position. And here's some examples. So. In this first one, it says for any point in the pre-image, all you do for the image is just change the sign of the x and the y. That's it. And so if we have, for example, up the point 3 minus 2, it would become minus 3, 2. And the negative 2 becomes a 2 because the negative of a negative is a positive. And so what you're really doing is changing the sign when you see this negative. Now, Another e example transformation is you switch the x and the y. See that here. So, uh, for example, this uh, point minus 1, 5 would become 5 minus 1. So these are some examples. There's others. And the next slides are going to show how to do translations, reflections, and rotations. So a translation, again, this is just moving it without turning it or rotating it in any way. Or, and, uh, and this is the the formula for that and it basically said for any point you move the x a distance of a and you move the y a distance of b where a and b can be either positive or negative so you can move the figure anywhere you want and there are two types of problems you you'll get in class for translations and one is where they just tell you explicitly move a distance along the x-axis and move another distance along the y-axis and in this example now you're gonna see this little diagram here, this little figure that I'm using for a pre-image in and, uh, and all the examples in this video. And so what we're going to do first is move this figure 6 along the ax x-axis and y along the, and minus 2 along the y-axis. So we do that and this is what we end up with. And that's, and you just moved it over 6 and down 2. Now another 
way that you may get a problem in the class is be, you're given a vector. Now a vector is just an arrow and an arrow could be written anywhere and it specifies a distance and a, direct, uh, a direction. And a vector is often named with a bolded lowercase letter. So this would be like vector u right there. And it, they may say translate the figure according to vector u. Now this particular vector u, uh, anytime, any vector, what you want to do is figure out what, how far that arrow goes in the x direction and how far it goes in the y direction. And this is the same as the first problem example here. It goes six in the x direction and down two in the y direction. Now, how far you go in the x direction is called the x component of this vector, and how far you go in the y direction is called the y component. And this 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 same vector is how you specify you how you go from this pre-image to the image. So it's doing the same thing as the first problem. So another problem you may get in your class is that they may give you a pre-image pre and an image and say, okay, what is the vector for that translation? So this is pretty much all you're going to have to do with translations. So next is reflection. And like I said earlier, what you are reflecting the figure across a line of reflection like a mirror. And this line of reflection can be any line, right? And you specify any line, uh, y equals mx, that's m is the, is the slope, and plus b, and b is the y-intercept, right? But there's only four lines, four cases, that you're going to do in geometry class because the other cases require trigonometry, and you're probably not going to do that in your geometry class. So the four lines of reflection you're going to have are a horizontal line, a vertical line, a diagonal line with a slope of 1, that's an upward diagonal line, and then a diagonal line with a slope of negative 1, which is a downward uh, sloping line. And here, and now, there's a concept here that we want to be clear about, is if these lines of reflection go through the origin, and the origin in an xy plane is 0, 0, right? Then you, they'll have this formula, and there's these very nice uh, reflection, I mean they have these equations, each one of these lines, and and they have a very nice reflection formula. And if they don't go through the origin, then we have a different method and we're going to get into that in this um, video. So uh, let's go through each of these examples. So um, the first is a, a, horizontal line, a horizontal line that goes through the origin is y equals zero, right? And that's that line right there. It's really the x-axis. And what you do for this, and here's our pre-image in black, and all you do is change the sign of the y, the second uh, uh, position in the ordered pair. And so you just do that for every, every, um, every point, every vertex in this shape, and then fill in the lines of the shape, and there it is in orange. So that's that. The for next is for a vertical line. Now the vertical line is e the equations x equals zero, and that's really the y-axis. And for that, all you do is to trans uh, to do the reflection is just change the sign of the x. And you could see that that we've done that on the example. And, it, and by the way, if you want to stop the video and look at these examples and see that this is really true, it'd probably be helpful. But so we're going to keep going. The next is uh, the up upward sloping line of of slope one, and the equation for that is y equals x, and that's shown in green. And what you do for this is you switch the x and the y, and you can see that that works. And the final one, the final of these four, is for a downward sloping line with the, that goes through the origin with the uh, slope of minus one, and the equation is y equals minus x, shown in blue. And for that, you switch the x and the y, and then you make both of them negative, right? And change the sign of both of them. And you do that, and you end up with it, a nice reflection. So that's it. And here are, they all are. We show them how they all are there. And now the next is that we'll, uh, we'll if, we, you know, what do you do if, the, if it doesn't go through the origin? And uh, we'll address that in uh, future slides. Uh, uh, and you'll see that how that works. So next to rotation. So we've done reflection, and now for rotation. So for rotation, there's only three cases as well. You'll do 
in geometry class because the other cases require trigonometry and you'll probably not do them. And so I wanted to say before we get going, when, we, when you count direct degrees, uh, when you get up in trigonometry and, and other math classes, you're going you're gonna to count them in a counterclockwise position, uh, direction. And so we're just going to do counterclockwise in this, these examples. And so here are the three cases. 90 degrees counterclockwise, 180 degrees, right, all the way halfway around, and that doesn't matter if it's you go clockwise or counterclockwise, and then 270 counterclockwise, and that's the same as 90 clockwise. And here are the formulas if the point of, of rotation is on the origin. And if it's not on the origin, then we have a, other methods for do that, doing that. So the first is uh, 90 degrees counterclockwise, and you for that, you switch the x and the y, and then you make you change the sign of the x position. This is now y, but you change it's the first position in the ordered pair, and that's how you do 90 degrees counterclockwise. For 180 degrees, it's, it's more straightforward. You don't switch the x and the y. You just leave the x and y the same, but you change both of them, both the signs to negative, and that just does it. And then for 270 counterclockwise, which is the same as 90 clockwise. You switch the x and the y, but now this time you change the sign of the y position, the second, the second position in the ordered pair. And that's it. And we'll do the, when it's the point of rotation, it's not in the origin, in the next couple of slides. And now, if we combine the four cases of reflection and the three cases of rotation, check this out. I like that. All these cases fill in all the seven available spaces to, for this, this pre-image here. All the possibilities. And another way to look at it is all the possibilities for switching or not switching X and for changing signs. So if you look down all these cases that we've learned, every one of them you have, and, and one of them is just the pre-image itself, four of them you switch the X and Y and four of them you don't. And then you either don't change the signs, change the sign in the first position, the X position, or you change the sign in the second position, or you change both sides, signs. And it works for um, all, all these cases. So it's very complete and cool, and, and it's a good way to learn this because you're going to need, you, I recommend, that you, you memorize all these for your class. And if you do that, you're going to be in great shape for your um, for this section of your geometry class. So there's one more uh, subject that to talk about, and this is the general rule. Uh, it's a general rule on how reflections relate to rotations. And the rule is, if you do reflections against across two intersecting lines, you end up with a rotation that is twice the angle uh, between those two lines. And you'll see you see this on this picture. So the lines of reflection, y equals 0 and x equals 0 is the orange and red, and they intersect at 90, right? A, uh, 90 degrees, that's a right angle. If you do a reflection across the y, so you start in the black here and we go across the y and that's in orange, and then you do a reflection from the orange over to this purple across the, the red, you end up with the rotation of 180 degrees, and that is exactly the rule. We've done two reflections across two lines at 90 degrees, and we end up with a rotation of 180 degrees. And we can do that also with the green and blue line. We go from black to green uh, in the first step, and then we go across the blue line from green to purple, and we're, back, we're down at 180 degrees, and it works in that direction as well. So this general rule works for any angle between two lines of reflection, even if it's 90, not 90 degrees. And, uh, and so any angle of intersection, the rule applies. OK, so you're going to need to know that for your uh, geometry class as well. So the last subject here is on if the line of reflection or the point of rotation are not at the origin. And what do you do? Well, in all cases, whatever, you can always do this, and it always works. You do three steps. You translate the line of reflection or the point of rotation and the pre-image, all of it, uh, everything, so that the line of reflection or the point of rotation goes through the origin. So you move them all, 
then you do them and you go from the pre-image to the image by doing the reflection or the rotation and then you translate everything back in the same distance in the opposite direction and that's it so here's an example let's say we have our s same old pre-image and then instead of reflecting across the uh, the regular blue line that goes through the origin we now have a line of reflection that goes y equals minus x downward sloping line but it has a y-intercept of 3 and the first step you do is translate everything down so it now goes through the origin and there's a the vector that shows you how you translated it down and then you do your reflection and then you translate it up and it works so you can do this for any for any problem like this and in particular if you reflect over the horizontal line or an upper uh, upward diagonal line or a downward diagonal line the one we show here where b can be positive or negative you know that's the y-intercept then you always translate in the vertical direction so it works for all those cases so the next example we have is when the we have a, a vertical line and this x could be x equals a where it can be any positive number or negative number it's a v any vertical line and in this situation we we now will move the uh, everything either uh, horizontally right or to the left now in this particular uh, we're going to see this but in this particular example I want to also show what happens when the line of reflection goes right through the figure well all the formulas still work so you'll see so first thing we do is translate it over so that this vertical line goes through the um, origin and then we do the, uh, the the reflection and when we do this reflection and I only I only show the image the I didn't want to show both the pre-image and the image because it got too messy but that's it just flips around the if it, fl it flips around the uh, the line of reflection and it works just fine so you can it's it's okay and it, it and then finally we translate it back and that's it so that works for um, uh, the vertical line as a, and then the final is the point of rotation now the point of rotation could be anywhere and you follow the same three steps so we, let's just take an example of our regular old pre-image and then you know we're going to have a point of rotation that's not on the I'm sorry yes that's not on the um, not on the uh, origin and we move every translate everything down so it, it, the point of rotation is on the origin and in this case let's do a rotation of 180 degrees and then we translate everything back so that works and so that's how you do it if, uh, and the final thing I want to say about this is that there are some shortcut formulas when the line of reflection or point of rotation are not through the origin but some of these shortcut formulas are really not so short they're complex and it's really not worth it and for those complex ones I would suggest just do the three-step technique which you can do anyway no matter what but for the reflection across the vertical line or across the horizontal line and rotation of 180 degrees there's these nice little formulas that you can use and you could memorize them and they would work just fine as well or uh, and, and now there's these other the other um, situations have a formula as well but it, you know I would you probably don't want to memorize these complex things and, and you can just do the three-step process but you can do the three-step process for any of these so now we're going to our summary and then this is everything that we've said in these slides and it's all on one page so there are three rigid transformations there's translations where you may uh, be given the distance in x direction and y direction or you may be given a vector and uh, we talked about how you use the vector to do that and then there's reflection and it reflects across uh, like a mirror and there's four cases the horizontal line vertical line diagonal slope uh, of one and diagonal slope of negative one whether it goes through the origin or whether it doesn't go through the origin we learned about those and the rotation there's only three cases 90 counterclockwise 180 270 counterclockwise and here's the formulas and how to do it if it doesn't if it's the point of rotation it's not the origin and here's the three-step process and we have one more rule of the connection between reflection and rotation and that was everything we 
learned. And it's all you really need to know if you memorize these formulas and you do problems, you know, your assigned problems in class, you'll do just fine. So that's it. Thanks.